How can solar panels generate electricity from sunlight? In this video, we will discuss solar panels. What is the content on these panels and how the principle works? Solar panels are one of the power plants, so the output is electrical energy. So, to understand it, we first start from understanding electrical energy. Electricity can be created because there are electrons flowing. For example, like this. I there is a simple circuit, which consists of a battery, a switch, a lamp, and wires. When we turn the switch on, the light will come on. The flame of the lamp is a reaction of the movement of electrons passing through this light bulb. It's like a windmill. When the wind blows, the reaction pinwheel will spin. Well, in electricity, when there are electrons passing through the lamp, the reaction is the lamp shines. What causes these electrons to move? Electrons can move because there is a difference in charge between the two parts. This process takes place inside the battery. So on that battery, there are two poles, positive and negative poles. The positive pole is made of a mixture of materials that have fewer electrons, while the negative pole is made of a material that has an excess of electrons. Because there is a difference in the number of electrons, the electrons from the negative pole will flow to the positive pole through the wire. This is what causes electrical energy to form. Now we're back to the solar panels. Solar panels are actually almost the same as batteries. So to make electricity possible from these solar panels, we need the difference in charge between the two parts. How is polarization in solar panels? Why do solar panels need sunlight? So the solar panel is composed of several layers. Well, that produces electrical energy is a layer called a solar cell. If we peel it again, this solar cell consists of two layers. That is, the negative layer located above and the positive layer located below. The negative layer is made of a mixture of silicon and phosphorus. This causes the negative layer to have an excess of electrons, while the positive layer is made of a mixture of silicon and boron. This mixture lacks electrons, giving rise to a kind of electron hole that can attract electrons. When we paste between the negative and positive layers, then the electrons near the sticking area will fill the electron holes. Well, this will create a new area whose location is at the junction between the negative and positive layers. This area is called the depletion zone. In the depletion zone, all electron holes are filled with electrons, so the conditions are balanced. Because it is balanced, the charge is neutral. Well, this area will be a fence to keep the electrons that are still more in the upper area from crossing to the bottom. Then we apply light to this solar cell. The beam contains a photon and it triggers electrons inside the depletion zone to detach from the hole. The loose electron will move to the negative area or up, while the electron hole will move down to the positive area. So at this point, the upper area contains a lot of electrons and the lower area contains a lot of electron holes. When we connect the upper and lower areas through a conductor, electrons will be attracted to fill the electron holes below. Electrons that have filled the hole below move up to the depletion zone area, and this process happens over and over again as long as there are rays hitting the solar cell. So, the production of electricity in solar cells occurs because electrons are in and out of holes. Electrons will naturally move closer to the electron hole, while sunlight will actually release electrons from the holes. Thus, when a mechanism like this is created, there is a continuous transfer of electrons. This process is called photovoltaic. Then, the solar cell will be attached to the conductor plate in the lower area. This is the positive terminal. Then at the top will be attached the radius of the conductor. This is the negative terminal. So, on one solar cell, there are already positive and negative terminals. Then, there is a layer of anti-reflective coating. 
This serves to prevent but excessive reflection of sunlight. Thus, the incoming light can be maximized. This layer is cracked under the negative terminal. Then, the solar cells will be arranged in series in a panel. The number of cells is also adjusted to the capacity of each panel. Some contain 36 cells, 60 cells, or 72 cells. The electricity generated by solar panels varies depending on the intensity of the light that hits it. Under normal light conditions, each cell can produce DC electricity with a voltage of 0.5 volts with a current of 8 amperes. That is, if arranged in series, then the 36 cells will produce 18 volt 8 amperes. The capacity of 60 cells produce 30 volt 8 amperes and 72 cells produce 36 volt 8 ampere. From there, we can know the power of each solar panel. For a capacity of 36 cells, the power is 144 watt. For the 60 cells, the power is 240 watt. And the 72 cells, the power is 288 watt. It does look small. For this reason, in a household scale, usually uses three to four solar panels. Then, because the output of the solar panel is still in the form of direct current, it needs to be changed to AC current so that it can be used in home electricity. This is the task of the inverter. Inverter is a component to convert DC electricity from solar panels into AC electricity with a voltage of 220 volt. But before the current is fed into the inverter, usually the current from the solar panel will be stored first on the battery so that the supply of this unit will continue to be supplied, even though there is no sunlight. That's an animation of how solar panels work. Hopefully, it can add insight to all of us. Don't forget to subscribe for the next video. Thanks for watching.